I don't have a plan. I'm just grabbing pieces and I'm cutting them. I was told there's no real wrong way to do it, but all of this feels wrong. Hi, I'm Yuji. I'm a professional chef. These are my $306 ramen ingredients. Hey, I'm Joe. I'm a home cook, and these are my $11 ramen ingredients. Sayonara. Why do they do this to me? Top ramen and spam. <laughs> I can work with this. Oh! Oh! oh. This is this going in my food? I was planning to make anko miso ramen with nori noodle, ajitama, and monkfish chashu. I had a whole monkfish with a head on. Very beautiful. This is the most disgusting looking fish I've ever seen. I was going to use every single part. Bones for my broth with ginger, leek, and kombu. I can't stop looking at this thing. This looks like the thing that was trying to kill them in Finding Nemo. The liver for ankimo miso paste, and the fillets for monkfish chashu topping cured in kombu. Uh, there's a lot of bottles. There's no words I can read on any of them. I have fresh jewelry eggs to make ajitama and everything I need to make my own ramen noodle from scratch. Where are the noodles? I don't see any. With Joe's recipe, I have simpler ingredients. You might find these in your pantry or local grocery stores. But with a little bit of techniques, we can make this even better. If I have to guess how much this will cost, $13? $11. Very close. <laughs> If I had to guess, this would cost $348.75. I feel like they could have fudged the numbers to make me right, but you know, whatever. Here I have Chef Yuji's recipe book with the recipe for his ramen. It looks like I gotta get started with my fish here, so let's go. Joe, you're gonna have to break it down and then we're gonna use every part of it. This is Ernesto, he's my monkfish. You know, he's a good guy. Now I'm gonna cut him into pieces. To make good ramen, you need a great broth with a lot of collagen. So monkfish has so much collagen. The giant head and tails are connected with one spine. So you have to use the back of the knife and then just try to make a little bit of a cut. Every time I uh, cook with Chef Yuji, I'm cutting a fish's spine into pieces. Am I the spine guy? This is the head. This is the tail. He's only got two sections. It's like uh, if we were only a head and butt. I don't know if I'm doing this right, but I'm so sorry, Ernesto. All right, I've separated the head and the tail. Anko miso ramen is very special because it represents what motenai is. Motenai is no waste in Japanese. Uh, this is <laughs> this is ramen. Um, I've never experienced ramen like this, but I trust Chef Yuji. That's one thing I do know. A little warning. Monkfish has a giant mouth with a lot of sharp teeth. Don't hurt yourself. We're roasting everything, including his teeth. Teeth go over there too, and it's just another day. So Joe was going to make a very basic ramen, but I'm gonna do a little bit different. I'm going to make crispy spam and baby bok choy mazmen with onsen tamago and a scallion oil. The first thing I'm making is a crispy spam. I'm not gonna lie, I don't use spam usually, but I think I can make it work. Mazemen is my signature style ramen, which is dry ramen. Ramen served without a broth, but with a seasoning and an oil. How do I even just go like that? Whoa. So I'm going to cut it a little bit smaller and then make it crispy so that when I mix it, it becomes almost like a seasoning for the noodles. Now it's time to fillet my tail meat. So first thing I gotta do, I'm gonna pull off the skin. It feels very satisfying to do it. It feels like you know, taking the shrink wrap off or something. How do I know when I got it off? Is there more that's supposed to come off? Or? Hey, that's good enough in my book. So I'm just gonna cut along here and this is very tender. It just goes right through, no problem. There we go, more fish spine. This goes in with the bones. My fillets are filleted. Just trying to make sure that they don't become overcooked. So I'm trying to separate them and just keep churning. I wanna make like a Almost like a breakfast bacon, nice and crispy. It smells great. <laughs> I got all my monk chunks here and now it is time to blanch them. I'm gonna put it in here for about 30 seconds until it looks white-ish. I'm pulling out the last of my monk chunks and this is ready to go. We're gonna put these into the oven and roast them at 500 degrees and then I'm going to broil them. Finish it up with a broiler, so it has a really nice char color, which actually transfers to the color of the broth. 
So the, these two crispy spams are looking pretty good. So I'm gonna take them out as they are nice and crispy. It's time to make my broth with my monkfish bones. And that's the spine. So the combination of leek and ginger blend really well with fish flavor. And we're gonna do a cup of sake. I'm just gonna cover up everything with the water. And the broth is gonna go on for about three to four hours. And then he's gonna strain the broth and then add the kombu to finish. And I'm just gonna let it sit for 30 minutes. So now what I have here is monkfish broth that I made myself. It's a day of first for me and I'm feeling really good. So I'm gonna use this spatula in a couple ways. I'm gonna separate the outside and the inside and I'm gonna blanch inside in a hot water and then the outside I'm gonna just deep fry it. You really don't have to cook that long. You just have to pretty much dump it and then take it out right away. I'm now making my chasu, which is a topping for my ramen. So Joe will be curing the tail parts of the monkfish with a kombu to make a kombu cured chashu. Chashu is usually a pork, thinly sliced after it's roasted. Monkfish chashu is just an inspiration from that. All right, my fish is salted. Now I'm gonna wrap it up in the kombu. Now, I've never done this, but I was told I'm supposed to spiral it. I don't know why it's called curing. He's not cured. He's dead. So to curing it will take out all the unnecessary moisture. To have a really successful chashu, you want to have a almost crispy surface in order to be able to be sliced thin. I don't know if it's right, but it looks cool. And that is the number one rule of cooking. And now, final step, I'm going to wrap them up in my cheesecloth here. And then you're going to air dry it in a fridge overnight. Uh, I'm just going to throw this into the fridge and let it cure. Now I'm gonna focus on this outer leaf. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just deep fry this. All right, let's see how it looks. It's definitely looking more pink. You know, I don't know what cured monkfish looks like, but this feels right. And now I'm gonna roast this in the oven at 350 for 20 minutes. These are actually looking very nice. My baby bok choy is two ways are finished. Crispy bok choy and then the blanched bok choy. This is gonna be a great topping for my ramen. I got my tails out of the oven, they're nice and cool, and now I'm gonna slice them up. These slices are getting a little less pretty than in the beginning. Things started to fall apart at the end there, but I got some really nice looking slices like this baby right here. I'm gonna cut this other one and then we'll be good to go. So there are two types of eggs that are commonly used for ramen. Aji tama and then onsen tamago. I'm making onsen tamago and then Joe is making aji tama. Ajitama is more for broth because it's hard, so it doesn't actually sink into the broth. I don't usually hard boil, ice bathe, and marinate my eggs, but you know, we're in Chef Yuji's world now. This onsen tamago is more common for mazamen noodles because the egg is very runny, so you break it and it kind of becomes almost like a carbonara. I'm going to use this subi machine. Subi machine is a machine that controls the temperature of, of the water at set temperature. I'm gonna just wait for about a half hour until they're completely uh, finished. And I'll take it out and soak in an ice bath. It's like a spa for eggs. Now I'm going to marinate them in a mixture of one part each of sake, mirin, and soy sauce. I'm gonna put this in the fridge and let it marinate for 24 hours. Joe is gonna be making an kimo miso paste with monkfish liver, sake, and white miso. I've been warned that every step of this is gonna be something I'm not gonna like. Uh, I'm gonna be removing the bloodline from this monkfish liver. I'll be chopping it up and then I will be pulling worms out of it. So let's get started. This here is the bloodline, which I will be removing. I don't have any experience doing something like this. Maybe deveining a shrimp would be the closest. Monkfish liver is almost like a natural foie gras from the ocean. Uh, it's called the ankimo. So it will add a really nice fat into the broth and also so much creaminess that you won't be able to get from anything else. This is giving me some problems. Okay, but that's like a, that's a piece of bloodline right there. And now I'm gonna cut this into cubes and then we will start removing worms. It's natural to find little worms in a monkfish because they are on the bottom of the ocean, but there's nothing to be afraid of that. You just have to take it out. I don't see any in this piece. I guess Yuji ordered a wormless monkfish. 
It's really a shame. And now it's time to blanch my liver chunks. And then they are going into the ice bath so that they stop cooking. So I have this scallion here. I'm gonna use this in two different ways. So I'm gonna separate the green and the white and the green is gonna be for the scallion oil. And the green part is a little bit bitter, but once it's cooked in oil, it gets a little bit sweeter. So I'm gonna just cook this in oil and then just keep this fresh. And then it's important to have a flavored oil, especially for a dry style ramen, because that's gonna be the main part of the seasoning. I'm gonna just add neutral oil and then I heat it up until they are just soft enough to be able to blend it with an immersion blender. My liver chunks are ice bathed, and now I'm gonna chop them up into slightly smaller pieces. These are going to be the paste that goes into my ramen broth. Now I'm just gonna scoop it up. You take the sake, and we're just gonna cover it. I'm gonna simmer this for a half hour until the sake totally evaporates. I'm just uh, julienning this uh, white part. Now it's all finished. I'm gonna just put it in the water. This will add a more curly textures and also remove a little bit of bitterness. I've been stirring this nonstop and it's nice and cooked down. I'm gonna blend them up in this little food processor and turn them into a paste. Yeah, this is exactly what my morning smoothies are like. So we're gonna grab a spoonful of the miso. White miso will add just a really nice a sweetness and also extra salt. The combination of the fat from the monkfish liver and then a white miso are really great. My paste is done and now I'm gonna put it into this bowl here. It does look like cookie dough, which is uh, troubling. This is like if you're a prank person, you know, make yourself up some miso liver paste and prank your friends. This is gonna be, I'm pretty sure, my first taste of liver. That's pretty good. I don't know if I'd do it every day, but you know, this one is good. Now, scallion is cooked enough uh, to be made into like a scallion oil. I have this immersion blender, so I'm gonna just blend the whole thing and make a really nice green sauce. Wow, nice and green. So I added to my scallion oil here, and I'm gonna add a little bit of sesame oil. This is the secret ingredient. Shrimp flavor, love it. Wow, smells so good. <laughs> I can make this, yeah. And then I add the package. This is gonna make a really unique top ramen. I'm pretty confident, yes. <laughs> I'm gonna be making nori noodles now, and I'm very excited about this because I've never made noodles before, and I love noodles. What's unique about this is that we're using this nori, which is like seaweed, and this is gonna get incorporated into the noodles. Oh, look at that. That looks like you opened like an ancient book. Look at that. <coughs> I have a mouth full of nori dust. Pour the flour in and get a nice, even mix going. This is the kansui. Kansui is alkaline. Alkaline adds extra gluten into the noodle and it makes the noodle more bouncy and chewy. I'm gonna just kind of make a well here and then I'm just gonna pour my water in. This feels a lot better than the slimy fish that I was handling earlier. Now I'm just kind of guessing on what the proper technique is. This feels right. You're gonna have to rest it for a little bit so that the gluten will dip it up a little bit more and then the noodle will be nice and chewy. It's been about an hour. First things first, I'm gonna cut this into some sections. Dust the whole area where I'll be working. Roll it out and then make a big sheet and just cut it with a hand. I'm gonna go pretty thin with these noodles. But that there, that's a good looking noodle. Kind of twist and massage all around so that they will have a really nice natural waviness. And then that will pick up the miso much, much easier. So I got this ginger and lime. So I'm gonna be making ginger lime juice. Hmm. Wow, that's actually pretty good. It's gonna be perfect finish for my ramen. Time to finally get to noodles. That's it. Last of my noodles are done. Gotta make them wavy real quick. Now look at this, I made noodles myself. I've never done this before, so I'm, I'm really proud. Now I'm the top ramen. All right, we're in the home stretch of this ramen. First thing I'm gonna do is make my broth. Whisk it up. I'm gonna take 
a big old clump of noodles. I'm just gonna drop them in there. I'm gonna cook it for about two, three minutes. All right, my noodles are coming out. Look at that beautiful bowl of noodles, oh my lord. Okay, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. So I'm just trying to carefully toss the noodle in oil. We are going to take my broth. I'm just gonna ladle it, ladle it in. Play it onto the plate and then add eggs. Looks perfect. It's nice and runny. Now we beautify. Three pieces of chashu. I think that looks real nice. And then I'm gonna take my eggs. Look at the color on that. And we're just gonna give it a nice slice down the middle, or right there. And then I'm gonna just add a toppings to make it look pretty. Sesame oil that we're just gonna drizzle. Black pepper and togarashi. Uh, so shichimi togarashi is spicy. It combines everything together. We're gonna top it off with the scallions. This is a white too. Part of the scallion. A scallion oil that I made earlier. This is sesame oil. The last thing I'm going to do is grate a lime zest. Finish with the ginger and then lime juice. So this is my take on Joe's Ramen. Crispy Spam and then a baby bok choy mazmen with onsen tamago and a scallion oil. This is my take on Chef Yuji's Ramen. I can't wait to see what he did with my ingredients. Hey Joe, how's it going? Feeling very good about how this, you made, right? this challenge. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I, yeah. I was back in college. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, working with ramen. my ingredients. <laughs> That's still what I make ramen yeah, with, yeah, yeah. Uh, all these years later. Wow. Oh, yeah, this looks like, like a uh, fancy restaurant mm -hmm. ramen, and you did it with top ramen noodles. <laughs> <laughs> that smells amazing. You probably wouldn't be surprised to know that I've never handled a monkfish before, <laughs> but I've also never made noodles before. Oh yeah? So it's this fun, is my right? first time making noodles. Fun, this is yeah. very cool. It wasn't too difficult. I'm dying for mm. you to try it. Let me know what you think. Mmm. Right. Wow. That's crazy. It's actually pretty, like, delicate. I'm, I'm pretty proud of this. I'm really happy. Yeah, you did a great job. Good, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Great, because I'm looking for work. You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> this chashu came out super good. It's so simple, just salt and seaweed. Mm -hmm. It really adds a really good flavor. Thank you. Now you have to try my top ramen. <laughs> yeah. All right, so walk me through what you did yep. here. So maze men means dry noodle, but it actually literally translates as a mixed noodle. So what you're gonna do first is to break this onsen tamago, and then the egg yolk will come out super runny, and then you're gonna mix the noodle in it. So it becomes almost like a ramen carbonara. <laughs> it's great. very nice. This is great. I can eat this it's actually day. good. Nothing is taken the forefront at all. It all really just blends together really nicely. Who believe if I say this is a fresh noodle? <laughs> I should serve this at my restaurant now. Yeah. Top ramen. Yeah, top yeah. ramen. I mean, yeah, the you, overhead is so you, low on this. Yeah. I'm curious. Um, next time we work together, what kind of fish spine <laughs> it's going to be? Is it going to be like a great white shark spine that I got to wrestle myself? Just think about spineless fish. Oh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> Jelly, yeah, I need a break from jet, spines. Jellyfish. Right I've, I've uh, despined too many fish. <laughs>